I imagine a lot of people are thinking, okay, it took Greg, you know, this long to get to where he's at, or it took three to four years to build 80% of the progress. Could you have got that 80% within two years or two and a half years if you hovered around 12 to 15% at a more conducive body fat to building rather than being eight to 10% all the time? And then like, if you, I don't know how many people would have the patience for this, but staying not fat, but like not aesthetic as fuck for two to three years in order to eventually get to your aesthetic, like where you want to be in a shorter time frame. Like, would that be a something yeah, that you thought would have worked? Yeah, I have a I have a long winded answer for this. Um, the first thing I'll say is that like I have to be pretty objective. Um, is there a faster way to do it? Like the reality is, and people ask me, how long does it take to build your physique? How long does it take this? You might never get there. Like mm -hmm. that's the reality. You know, how many, how many of your friends do you know that freaking go to the gym and incline press 130 pound dumbbells? The reality is like the idea of looking for the shorter path. Um, it's a good thing to do, but you have to be like realistic where some people will, will never like never hit a certain level. Um, and, and like, if you're always trying to find, you know, the shorter path, um, it's like at the end of the day, you know, I freaking love the fitness journey. I love training. I love figuring things out, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't. But it's like, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, that's like the pill people are gonna have to swallow where it, like not, I, I, you know, I've built up to doing, you know, 315 for six, seven reps on bench with lower ab veins and stuff. Some people genetically will never, ever get there. I would love to tell them with, with my program, anyone can, can rep 315, you know, for six reps chiseled, not ever, not ever can do that. Um, I, I definitely know I have, you know, very good genetics for that. But as far as, you know, my belief is that if your goal is to look as good as possible at 8%, uh, at 8% body fat, there's no benefit for deviating more than two to 3% from that. So if you have to get to 12 to 15% body fat to gain muscle, then to cut down to 8%, you're better off just staying at 10%, 10, 11, um, deviating, deviating too far from that. It can throw things off because then you have to spend time cutting. If you hit a really solid bench press, um, or incline bench press, when you have an extra eight to 10 pounds of body fat, it's a different lift when you get rid of that fat. Um, it just, it, it feels different. Um, if you look at, you know, Olympic level gymnasts, yes, they're doing more body weight stuff, but they've built, they develop and build their strength without having to put on, put on fat. Um, they build extremely high levels of strength um, and resistance is resistance, whether, you know, you're doing a lap pull down or pulling yourself up with one arm or doing handstand pushups or shoulder pressing hundred pound dumbbells, resistance is resistance. And they are, they're able to build um, uh, strength without having to put on 15, 20 pounds of body fat. So I think that if, if the end goal is to be as strong as possible, yeah, it might make sense to, to, to kind of get up to 12 to 15% and then you can eat a lot more, recover better. Um, but if the goal is just to be as sharp as possible, I don't, I think it's counterproductive um, to, to do a deliberate bulk. And I just, I haven't seen it. Like I haven't seen it. I don't know. It's hard to say. Um, it's hard to say, but I just haven't seen it work out that well. Like not really with naturals. 